headed into makeup the base so we're heading into makeup and i don't see any sunscreen gg come on don't do this to me <laughs> gg hadid's guide to post-pregnancy skincare mm. she speaks in the third person when she is overworked and underslept. Her name is Cassandra Bankson. She's been an expert and in the industry for the past 10 years, and she suffered with acne for 15, which has been really unfortunate. And she recently shared something really embarrassing on TikTok about the worst thing she ever did to her face. And, um, well, if you saw it, then you saw it. You know where the comments are, which is really just one big requests box, if you haven't figured that out by now. <laughs> She's a medical esthetician, and although she has worked alongside and with doctors and dermatologists, which she really loves, she is not a physician herself. Someday, but not today. She likes to learn, she likes to analyze, she likes to scrutinize so that we can all learn things together, absorb knowledge into our brains and skincare into our pores, and today, that's what we're gonna do with good old Gigi Hadid. Because what can I say? I'm <laughs> not fully caffeinated yet, but we're getting there. Let's press, bleh, bleh. Let's press play and see if my brain decides to do the same thing or not. <laughs> I mean, how many hours is two little hours of sleep? Three, four? I mean, it depends, right? Cumulative? Need to get that REM sleep though, someday. But what about naps? Do naps count? Okay, okay. Adenosine was septos. Wake up. If you knew it was 5 a.m., you might give me more slack, right? <coughs> it's not the COVID, don't worry. I mean, I better not be. <laughs> better not be. Hello, Vogue Beauty Secrets. It's Gigi. I'm so excited to finally be here to share my secrets. I don't know if there are that many secrets but something a little bit more than my everyday looks. Okay, let's get started. I've already washed my face. While I was pregnant, I really moved towards like really clean products. Oh, oh. so first off, GG, what did you wash your face with? I would love to know what you used to cleanse your pores. This claim about natural and clean products, I used to think that clean and natural products were better. When I first went to aesthetic school in 2009, that was the message that was kind of shoved down my throat. And then through marketing in the beauty industry, that is now what is being shoved down other people's throats. But as I have taken literally the past 11, 12 years to research and understand skincare, you realize that clean and natural have no regulated definition. So I could call anything clean. Think about it. Lead, arsenic, cyanide, all of of those are technically natural but that doesn't make them safe for you and then like there are other things that we think are dangerous but are actually totally fine for instance if I told you that I woke up and drank pesticides this morning would you be concerned you know that caffeine is a natural pesticide right and so when it comes to these things there are these scientific definitions and then like these terms that we use in everyday language and lexicon that can become confusing and when marketers and companies try to shove these things down our throats and fear monger us into buying their products by labeling them specifically, um, that's when it becomes deceptive. And especially like right now, I feel like it's happening more than ever. For instance, these brands are saying, we're going chemical free, Sephora's going chemical free. It's like, okay, you're gonna remove the air from your store? What about the water in all of your products? You would have to remove all of the products if you want to go chemical free. Anyways, we could go on about this for days and I'm not going to. I just wanna say, that I'm naturally a critic and a skeptic, and I hope to share these things with you so that when you see those labels that say it's clean or natural, you don't automatically part with $150 of your money because you think it's better. You actually understand that that is just a marketing term that's being used. You have to look at how the brand defines natural or clean for themselves, and sometimes there are lab-created ingredients that are more sustainable and more effective and safer because they're better tested than you know some bergamot extract that is just thrown into a cleanser. So, yeah, you could get hyaluronic acid naturally from rooster combs, which is pretty inhumane, or you could just make it in the laboratory. It's less expensive, it's better regulated and better tested, um, and you don't have to kill a rooster. Anyways, TED talk over. So I used a brand called Oliveda, and it's just olive tree extract, and they have everything from cleanser to moisturizer, oils, so I really 
enjoyed using that, but that was also like during the summer. Oliveira, I actually had never heard of this line and they reached out to me probably at six months to a year ago and just sent me free product. I had like tested it on my hand. I gave it to some friends and family. I'm pretty sure they liked it, but if I remember correctly, one of the serums was like $120. It was a little bit excessive. Um, it did smell a little bit funny. And if you want to spend your money on it, go for it. Again, it was vegan and cruelty free, so I didn't really have a problem with it. I just didn't test it out enough to like totally love it. I really wish that she would show us the package rub it into her beautiful skin and let me just watch as she does that because I am creepy or just skincare obsessed. And now I have moved into kind of my winter routine, which really for me is about a thicker uh, moisturizer because my skin gets so dry. I mean, my skin's always dry. This is the moisturizer that I just started using. I'm really loving it. This is the Ceramidin, Ceramidin cream um, from Dr. Jart. Dr. Jart is a brand that I used to love and then I found out they weren't cruelty free and I stopped using them. Fun fact, did you know that there is no doctor in Dr. Jart? Dr. Jart was made, I think yes, in Korea, but it was actually made to be a brand that was based on architecture and it brought like architecture and beauty together. Uh, but Dr. Jart is not an actual doctor, does not exist. And again, this was told to me from the brand since I went on a trip with them like what, four or five years ago. But yeah, if you didn't know, now you know. And I don't use them anymore because they're not cruelty free. I am patiently waiting. This is for $45, a lightweight hydrating moisturizer. Let's check those ingredientes and see what we can find. A lot of this stuff is pretty basic. We've got glycerin, caprylic triglyceride, hydrogenated polyoleofin, hydrogenated polydecane, methyl trimethicone, shea butter, ceramide NP, which is excellent. You've seen a lot of people would look at this and they'd be like, oh my God, I can't read this, this is so scary. Well, glycerin is found in foods. Like you could eat it. I don't recommend it, but you could, right? Ceramides, they're made naturally by our skin. They make up to 50% of the outer layer of our skin, the stratum corneum. Caprylic triglyceride is made from coconuts and it's really soothing to the skin and this looks like a really good moisturizer. Um, it does have things like turmeric, like artichoke, we have oat. These can be super soothing to the skin with beta-glucans, excellent. We've even got ceramide AS, AP, NS, and EOP. Um, this is really good. <laughs> Again, I am upset that it's not cruelty-free. Um, I don't like the bergamot fruit oil. Bergamot fruit oil is one of the oils that is a little bit more sensitizing. It's seen as a fragrancing ingredient. It is one of the scents that it's only there for, you know, olfactory reasons and for sensory pleasure. Unlike some other oils that might have skin benefits, antioxidants, um, they might combine with the skin or activate certain receptors, like in the case of menthol and peppermint. Um, this one, it's, yeah, it's not my favorite. But again, that's my personal vendetta against bergamot oil. <laughs> if it were cruelty-free, I would throw my money at this one. But it's not cruelty-free, so you don't get no money from me. This is um, Otisite. This is the very, very dry skin. This is a new bottle because I go through this quickly. Otisite. I love that. Can we call it Otisite from now on? This is a serum. I believe it's called Odacite, but I could be wrong. And I like Otisite a lot better. Um, it's a very, very expensive line. And the reason why is because of this natural clean branding. It was made by, I believe, a cancer survivor who got very concerned about the ingredients in her products. And that makes sense. If you have cancer, there are things you shouldn't use, specifically Rogaine, certain steroid creams, right? There are specific things that happen that no one should have to go through. And I hope modern medicine, you know, starts to hurry up and find solutions for. But I can sympathize with being so desperate for finding a fix that you will try anything. And to try natural skincare, you know, if it makes you feel beautiful, uh, I, I understand that, even if I don't agree with that all the time. So like with my acne, right, I was so desperate to literally get the acne off my face that I tried everything, including using shampoo and conditioner on my face, sleeping in salicylic acid masks, using a pumice stone on my face because I didn't know better, using St. Ives apricot scrub and piss. Yes, it's got urea, but I don't recommend it. And again, that's very embarrassing for me to talk about. This was era 2005 to 2007, but I understand what it feels like to be that desperate. And for the Adasa line, this person who was struggling with cancer was so desperate that she completely cleaned 
cleaned out all of her products and decided that she wanted to create ones that she trusted. My understanding when I tried the line is that they had to be refrigerated because they're so natural uh, that they're not preserved well, meaning that bacteria and mold could grow in them. Because, um, you know, for certain cancer patients, using things that are not natural um, but that have been tested for safety and efficacy are going to be safer because just the way chemicals and medications can have side effects, plants can have side effects, herbs can have side effects. And if we're using those in natural skincare and we don't know all of the side effects because we just haven't tested them as well, it doesn't mean natural is safer. It just means that it's less tested. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you see what I'm saying? You all see what I'm saying? And I really like to exfoliate in high school. I feel like maybe I did it um, a little too much. I would use like that St. Ives apricot scrub, which I loved. I used it till pretty recently, actually. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, same. I used the worst exfoliants and because I had acne, I just needed to feel that scrubby feeling to make me feel like I was doing something. I don't think she's using anything to exfoliate, which is good because in general, you shouldn't abrade your skin or exfoliate early in the morning. It's better to exfoliate at night, maybe one to three times a week, depending on if you're struggling with acne, if you need exfoliation or if you don't. But let's jump back to this serum. This is the MO Plus P Very Dry Skin Serum. It's $46 for a very, very tiny amount, but that is okay. Um, and it does say it's for very dry skin. It says it has essential fatty acids, moringa oil, antioxidants, which is great. Let's look at the ingredients. Um, it says cold pressed certified virgin moringa seed oil. Um, we have neroli, we have lemon and rose. This is basically a bunch of oils and vitamin E. And again, this is why they don't have preservatives in them because it's just oils. You see a lot of brands that are more natural are more oil-based as opposed to water-based because water harbors bacteria, mold, a whole bunch of pathogens and allows them to grow and spread much easier than oil-based formulas generally do, depending on what's in them and depending on how they've been processed. But um, yeah. I mean, if she likes it, use it. She has the money. One brand that I do actually love that's not cold pressed, but cold processed is Oz Naturals. I've been using their line for probably gosh, what, four or five years. Um, they are really cool. If you want something cold processed, that's what I would recommend. They are less expensive. They are effective and they actually have really good ingredients and formulas. Whereas this could be nice. It's literally a bunch of oils mixed in with some essential oils. Like I wouldn't do this one. That's all. <laughs> Save your money. Whenever I'm working a lot or I'm wearing a lot of makeup or I'm coming from a shoe, I use Cetaphil because I just feel like it really cleans my skin. But I've always really gone for like drugstore skincare. I don't, I don't think, I mean, unless pregnancy I feel like is different and I really wanted something clean for that. But before that, I really just wanted good products and I don't always think that you have to pay a lot for that. Wow. <laughs> A celebrity who's probably a multi-millionaire who actually understands that you can get great products at an affordable price. I love this. Uh, fun fact, Gigi Hadid is supposedly amazing in person. I have not met her directly, but one of my greatest friends has. And um, I heard that she was one of the sweetest, kindest people that this person had ever met. Uh, which is nice because, you know, not all celebrities that we come across are, are that humble and down to earth. But it's amazing to know that she's always used affordable skincare. Cetaphil is a great option. It is recommended very often by dermatologists. I personally do not use Cetaphil because it is not cruelty free. For a long time, again, 10 years ago in aesthetic school, I was afraid of it because wah, parabens. But to be fully upfront, parabens have been tested. They have been safety and efficacy checked because there were so many concerns around them. And they have been proven to be some of the safest ingredients in skincare. And I understand like estrogen mimicking. I understand hormonal concerns. But again, these parabens, methyparaben, polyparaben, these were all tested. They've been very safe. Whereas there are a lot of natural things that get absorbed into the skin and we don't have the safety data. We don't have the testing of the efficacy to see A, if they're working or B, what they're actually doing. So again, natural is not always better. And Cetaphil is a great line if you don't mind the cruelty-free status, which you know that I do. If you're pregnant and you're concerned about what you can or can't use, speak to your dermatologist, speak to your OBGYN. They will guide you. For example, right now, retinoids should not be used during pregnancy oral retinoids like vitamin A, Accutane, we know that that can cause birth defects, but topical, we haven't tested them enough and right now they are not safe. Yet things like azelaic acid have been proven to be safe. Niacinamide has been proven to be safe. Um, especially people who are pregnant sometimes get melasma masks. There's like a pregnancy mask that can happen. 
And that can be very distressing for some people. Sometimes it goes away after pregnancy and sometimes it doesn't. And um, I understand wanting to have skincare options, but if you're scared, don't run to Sephora, don't run to Ulta, don't run to the detox market or the Whole Foods aisle. Go to your OBGYN, go to Dr. Mama Jones online, go to Dr. Dre, go to your dermatologist and ask them for options so that they can give you efficacy backed data and research um, and help you make choices that are right for you and your baby and your beautiful baby. During fashion week, I think is when my skin gets the most irritated because I wear makeup the most during fashion week. It's literally every day, all day, multiple makeup looks, um, multiple hands. They take the same makeup brush all the way down the line on 30 girls. So it touches a lot of faces and I feel like I, that's when I start to get irritated around and spots around my chin. Um, around my nose, obviously also stress too and not sleeping probably enough. I do extractions myself. Um, I've never really had like a facialist. I don't know. I'd rather like do it to myself and learn how to do it gently. And then a strange thing that I do, which my mom taught me is I put toothpaste on spots at night and it dries it out. I might get in trouble for saying that, but that's what I do. If that's what she does, that's, that's what, she what she does. She does. Uh, it is not recommended. It can be mildly efficacious, but we have such advanced skincare. Like why would you go archaically back to like what? 20s, 30s, 40s and put toothpaste on your pimples? When we have sulfur spot treatments, we have benzoyl peroxide spot treatments. We have literally as of this year, succinic acid spot treatments um, with both salicylic acid and succinic like why <laughs> why with the toothpaste <sighs> this is called the 101 ointment but it's like for everything I think all-purpose ointments are great you can put it on your lips then I dab it where my skin feels dry sometimes like on the tip of my nose <laughs> and also I find that like right where my eyebrows are where they start gets really dry I don't know why but I like to sometimes dab it there because I just think that eyebrow product like pencil and stuff goes on better. So sometimes I do that. During pregnancy, I think the thing that changed most about my skin was the pigmentation. I've had like this darkness near my eye from before pregnancy, but it got really dark when I was pregnant. I tried to wear hats in the sun and sunblock. Also like let it happen because I think it's natural. I knew it was gonna go away after I gave birth. And I think just like to not be hard on yourself and know that it's part of the process and it's it has it's lightened now it's it's not bad oh my god i don't know her but i love her isn't that amazing like these are our bodies if we want to treat our skin conditions we can if they bother us but like she said it's part of the process and that is a beautiful thing again this hyperpigmentation she's talking about sounds like this pregnancy melasma that can happen through hormonal changes in the body speak to your derm speak to your obgyn um you could use something like hydroquinone be aware of rebound hydroquinone i always recommend going to a doctor for hydroquinone although you you can get it under 2% over the counter, I think. Um, if you wanted some over the counter options, alpha arbutin, any other tyrosinase inhibitors, you could use licorice, you could use cosidic acid, you could use vitamin C. There are a lot of great options out there that can help with pigmentation. But if you really have concerns, again, talk to those practitioners. Um, and she said, like, maybe it'll go away. Also, sunscreen. Uh, she said hats, she said sunscreen. That is huge. Preventing sun exposure can really help to mitigate pigmentation as well. Headed into makeup the base. I really like a base that doesn't look dry. So we're heading into makeup and I don't see any sunscreen. We just had this wonderful pep talk about wearing hats and sunscreen for melasma and hyperpigmentation and now we're not wearing sunscreen? GG, come on, don't do this to me. <laughs> At least we have reached the point where my adenosine receptors are happily caffeinated. I wish that I knew what the cleanser was. I wish that she would be wearing a sunscreen, but overall, this is not bad. I love how down to earth she is. I loved this conversation. I don't recommend spending a bunch of extra money on natural and clean products. If you really wanna use them, then go ahead. Again, there are some other brands that I would recommend. I will put some in the bottom tab below, like natural brands I actually like. There's Indie Lee, there's Folion, there's Oz Naturals, there's Juice Beauty, um, even 100% pure for makeup. Again, natural doesn't mean better or it doesn't mean safer, but we can still have brands who brand themselves as natural that have good products. Just don't go wasting $250 on them. 
unless you're wiping your butt with hundred dollar bills, you don't have to spend an exorbitant amount of money on skincare. Now, if you want to, that is your prerogative. But if you don't want to, I am here to stand up for your wallet because it, it can't stand up for itself. Now, can it? Mm -hmm. She's not wrong, is she? Again, she speaks in the third person sometimes. And if those like and subscribe buttons have not been hit, we react to your request, so leave them in the comments box below. And always remember to both be beautiful and wear your damn sunscreen. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in these next videos. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.